This is the last in the series, uh, the success series for fall 2021. If you guys want more of this, we've always done it, or for the past couple of years, we've done it in the spring, and then we've done it again in the fall. I would really like your feedback. Number one, do you guys want this again in the spring? Number two, what kind of classes would you like for us to cover? Some of the suggestions has been um, budget and finance. Some of the suggestions have been social media marketing, which really would have to be broken down into the different platforms. So I could cover a couple of platforms. Right now, I'm very proficient with Facebook. I've learned Instagram pretty well. I'm proficient or, or familiar with YouTube and, and the algorithms for all of that I'm getting figured out. Uh, my next to master is TikTok. And so um, I, I understand and know the algorithms for Instagram, Facebook, learning YouTube, and we'll know TikTok by spring. Um, but videos in general, you guys, you got to get good at video. So we could even do one session on just video, just different I'd, ways I'd that you that. can use video in your business. So if you guys, Brandy, if you'll take some notes and you guys just go around the call while we're waiting on everybody and just let me know what topics would be most helpful to you in your business. That would be um, fabulous information. And then you guys with Paragon, if any of you guys are doing this class for CE, make sure that we have um, your full name, your email address, and your license number so that you get your CE credit. Got you, Mark. Is that who just raised their hand? Mark, Mark Tootley. Oh, hey, Mark. Um, I like y'all's training room. That looks great. I need to come by and see you guys. I haven't seen your new digs. You guys, okay. If you have suggestions on a better day and a better time, put that in the chat as well. It's y'all's input that creates the roster. So we need, need your input. All right. Um, I am going to share screen, which makes it really tough for me to see any chat comments. So Brandy's going to watch her comments and stop me as we go. You guys feel free to ask questions. This is your time. Um, I didn't share screen, did I? Hang on. All right. Hey, hang on one second. Y'all, like, literally close your ears because I'm going to yell, okay? Can you bring me a water? Okay, I'm back. All right, today we're talking about clients, uh, keeping clients for life. The reason that I put this uh, in the series of classes, when you're new in the business, well, let me back up. When you just start in the business, you're not real sure where your business is going to come from. So you got to start putting together a list of your sphere. Like, who do you know? Because just like we were just talking about um, when I was meeting with my team, your sphere, your tribe, your circle, whatever you want to call it, love you and are going to support you in business. But you got to remember to stay in touch with them. Remind them that you do mortgage loan. I mean, that you do real estate for a living. And be that source of information. And don't ever come across that you're so busy that, I mean, it, as you're talking to your friends and you go, oh my gosh, this business is overwhelming me. I'm running all over the place. Then they're not as likely to feel like you need the business. So choose your words wisely when you're talking to your circle or your tribe or your sphere of influence. But also choose your word wisely from the standpoint of these are your people. They love you. They trust you. They would support you in business. 
but sometimes we forget to ask. Clients for life comes from folks that's done business with you. They've enjoyed doing business with you. They believe in you. And they want you to succeed. Those are your clients for life. But oftentimes we are so focused and we use so much of our energy and time looking for new sources of business or paying for sources of business, ignoring the people that are already there that would send you the business if you would just ask. Sometimes it feels awkward to ask your friends and your family for business because you want them to know you and connect with you from a friend standpoint. But it's important for them to know that you do value their friendship and any friends of theirs is friends of yours and you would love to help them in real estate. So how do you say those things without feeling salesy with your friends. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Clients for life are people that, um, how many of you guys have great experience with a salesperson in the past and you remember that experience as being pleasant, but you haven't heard back from that person since that experience but if you did and they just asked, you would likely be top of mind. They would be top of mind for you again and you don't have any issues whatsoever referring them business. You guys have that sort of experience in the past with maybe an insurance agent or a, at a car dealership or, I mean, just think back to some of the times that you purchased something and it was just a fun experience. And you hadn't really thought about it until just now. Maybe you bought a boat somewhere and that was a great experience. You know, some of those big ticket items that was a great experience. Have you heard back from that person that took care of you and provided that service? Chances are not. Because I'm oftentimes sure. in business, go ahead. Sorry, real quick. Are you supposed, are you sharing your screen with the PowerPoint? No, not, oh, no, not yet. Nah. Chances are, whenever you guys think about that, you can think of those experiences, right? My husband buys a bazillion cars a year. Those of you guys who know my husband know that to be true. And knowing my husband is such a sucker for vehicles, it amazes me how many times he will show up on a dealership lot and people don't even follow back up with him. They don't even ask enough questions to find out what he's interested in, nor do they stay in touch with him. If they knew what his likes and dislikes were and they stayed in touch with him, he's such an easy sell. And it's missed opportunities every single time because they're not organized enough to even follow up with him. They don't even care enough to be asking the questions that lead to a relationship that would lead to more business for them. So I love this conversation, Customers for Life, because Renee, and all I, you, you closely connect with people and you value that human connection. And you've done, I mean, your clients absolutely love you because they feel connected to you. What is your process for following up and asking for future referrals from them? Do you have one? Her speaker's not working. Okay. Those are still good questions that I could have asked either in any of you guys. Do you guys have
referrals from your sphere of influence or your tribe. Do you have a process in place for that? Who, good. So I just want you guys to be thinking about this. I'm asking the questions to a couple of individuals, but I, I'm asking all of you guys, be thinking about what is my process that I have in place to continue to do business with people that I've done business with. We connected, we respect each other and you'd like to do business with them again or people like them. What is your process for following up to make sure that they don't forget you and that they understand that you want to do business with their friends and family and anybody else that you feel or that they that they feel would be a good customer for you. That part of the process is really important. One of the questions I asked them was I'm working with this woman and we're going to close on the date. And so I've been asking her, who do you know that I should know? Monica has a great response, and this is really important. For a long, long time, I would always say, I would love to help your friends and family. Please refer me some business. Right? I wasn't getting any referrals. I wasn't being specific. And I also was asking a question that really didn't re require a response. Monica said, she asked her clients, as you're doing business with them, you do not have to wait till the transaction closes. Who do you know that I should know that is thinking about real estate or has any questions about remodeling projects and what value they might add to the, to the home? Or is thinking about getting into... Um, flipping houses, or is thinking about whatever it is, you guys have to drop the ideas in their head and you need to ask, who do you know? Not, do you know someone? Because that's a yes or no question. You also don't have to wait till the transaction closes. How many of you guys, whenever you're buying something, a big ticket item, do you talk about that, ask questions, and do research at the workplace. Everybody that's buying a house that works around people, I promise the people they work with are tired of them talking about buying a house or selling a house. So don't wait till the transaction is closed to be asking the question. Who else do you know that I need to know or who else do you know that might have some questions about what the market is doing? Hey, interest rates are changing, you guys. Interest rates are up a lot from where they were even two weeks ago. So sometimes just asking that question, who do you know that's been thinking about buying a house that I need to talk to because the market is shifting and now is the time. We've got to educate and help people get off the fence if they've been thinking because they're gonna be regret thinking too long as rates continue to rise. You might lose some sales if you're not educating people on the fact the market has changed. Um, I'm gonna open up the slide and we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna, wait, let me look at these comments real quick to make sure there's not something. Oh, I love that, Brian. Would you like to unmute yourself and share that or you want me to read it? I don't mind speaking about it. Uh, happens all the time with me. Uh, I'll meet clients because I go outside of our general area or within 20 miles. I go outside that for clients pretty often. And they'll offer to buy me lunch if it's around lunchtime or dinner because we go all times of the day. Or they'll offer to pay for fuel. And uh, I'm like, no, just pass my name along. Here's some business cards. Anybody has any real estate questions, buying, selling, or even general advice? Uh, I'm happy to help. just to get top of mind. That's our big thing is top of mind. Top of mind. Top of mind. I'm going to go through these slides with you guys just to give you some things to think about. 
this is that time of year. Brian's got a, I mean, you're spot on, Brian. You're spot on. Um, be thinking about, this is that time of year you guys should be observing your business, not from a place of judgment, but just observe, reflect on 2021. Who did you do business with? Who did you enjoy doing business with? See if you can find a pattern within that. Is it the young home buyers? Is it investors? Is it the move up buyers? Is it the um, vacation home buyers? Is it the land buyers? Is it uh, new construction? What was your favorite when you look back on your business for 2021? Who did you do business with? What was the scenario? And why was that so fun for you? Without judgment, just reflect and observe what business looked like for you for 2021. Because 2022 is right around the corner and it's time to be putting a business plan together. It's time to be putting your budget together and it's time to be putting your marketing plan together. So observe for the next through November or at least reflect on the data up to this point and use that to create the business that you really want to do in 2022. Your business is predictable if you have a plan in place. I can tell you exactly how many phone calls you need to make based on the number of transactions that you want to do. Based on your conversions, if you're tracking that information. So now's the time to be really reflective and be thinking, have I done a good job at reflecting? I mean, uh, of tracking all of this information. Um, if I haven't, if you haven't, that's where you want to start. So just reflect, not from a place of judgment, but just from a place of observation. And then if you want any help really putting those marketing, the budget together, a marketing plan together, a business plan together, who you want to build your business with in 2022, raise your hand, get on my calendar, and I'll be happy to help you with that. Um, I'll be doing tons of that in the next 60 days. So I'll be in the float. Um, so for me, the reason that this topic is so important is because three years ago, I decided, you know what, this is really pretty silly. I've been doing this for a long, long time. Can y'all see my keeping clients for life on the screen right now? Okay. I've been doing this for a long time. And so I've done, a, I've done business with a lot of people. So why in the heck am I chasing down new people when I have people that already know, like, and trust me? I just need to stay in better communication. So I specifically put a plan together three years ago to do a better job of staying in touch with the clients I've already done business with. And also getting it out of my head and understanding the importance of asking for referrals from people I've already done business with. They know me, they like me, they trust me. Why wouldn't they know, refer their friends and family? I just had to ask. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things for you guys to be thinking about. Again, this is from a standpoint of, it's a new year. How do you wanna do business next year? If you want to do more business with your, with your tribe of people, then here's some things for you to consider. Um, engaging with your customers needs to be authentic and the engagement needs to come from heart. But you have to have a system for doing it because you guys are super busy people. So coming up with a system that fits your business to stay in touch with your customers, your clients, but speak from the heart when you do. But if you don't have a system for doing so, you're gonna look up and it's gonna be October and you're gonna go, dang it, another year's gone by and I haven't even been in touch with my database. I have not said a single word to them and here it is and I wanna do a customer appreciation event in November. That's a good starting point, but this time next year, it would be great if you looked up and you have this customer appreciation event 
and everybody feels so connected to you because you've stayed in touch with them the entire year. But how do you do that? As busy as you are, you have to have a system. So um, coming up with what works best for you is something that you're just going to have to uh, think through again, through observation, reflection, without judgment. Did I do a good job with this? Did I not do a good job with this? What can I do better next year and stay in, in contact with my customers? But you got to understand what do your customers want from you? There's got to be a connection, but they also need to view you as a person of authority for all things real estate. So how do you do that? Brandy, do you have a couple of ideas? How do you stay connected to your database, providing information, but yet still helping your clients feel connected to you from a heart, like meaningful connection? I know you have a process, that's why I'm picking on you. Videos for sure. And then just, um, I had mentioned earlier, but like all my first time clients, first time home buyers, um, I always tell them, don't ever feel like a question is stupid. Like I want to know every question that you have, even if you think that it may be a stupid question, like ask, because I want you to feel comfortable asking me and knowing everything about the process and any questions that you have. And that's a good message with your database. You guys, how many people right now? I mean, I heck, I've got a whole list of people to call for everything that might be broken a house because I'm experiencing it. I mean, like we are having one of those um, months. Jeff said the other day, I can't wait to turn the calendar because October has been pretty brutal. I mean, we've got jackhammer, uh, jackhammering up concrete for a plumbing problem. I mean, we just are, it's just been a month full of stuff. So you guys are a great resource to people who own homes and not if a house breaks, but when a house breaks, your people should be, um, should know you're one of the first phone calls for resources and information to help them out because you guys do houses for a living and houses break. So, um, Brandy, I, I know there's some ways that you're not thinking about that you're staying in touch with your database. Um, number one, birthdays. Number two, what are you doing? What are you doing for birthdays? So birthdays, I always send them a video out and Facebook message them individually as well and just, you know, shout out happy birthdays, um, anniversaries as well. I will contact them and just see if they need to us to review their loan or if they have, you know, any, any thoughts about moving so that I can refer them back to the agent or um, if they're wanting a CMA or anything like that. So. Love it. So one thing that we all decided as an office a couple of years ago People to feel special for their birthday. So how can we be part of making them feel special? It was that one trigger. It's a trigger. Now, remember, in order to form a habit, there has to be a cue, a trigger. There has to be an activity. And then you got to have a reward. Your brain's going to take a little while before it, you got to do it consistently before it ever becomes a habit. A habit to the point where your limbic part of your brain is doing it no matter what. It's just whatever your trigger is. Trigger for us, for me, is a new month. I get a list of all of my clients that have birthdays for this month, and I've already decided, am I going to deliver them a gift? Am I going to send them the card that I have that has glitter in it that I, you know, tell people, throw it in the air and celebrate yourself? Am I going to send them a video? Or are they just going to get an email? Or are they going to get a phone call? Or are they going to get a text message? Are they going to get a Facebook shout out? 
Are they going to get a Facebook private message? Whatever it is, customers for life means creating a process and a system for staying in touch with your clients and asking for referrals when you do and being available for their questions, not if, but when they have them. How many of you guys on the call right now um, have a birthday program? Just raise your hand. All right. That might be one where, one area for you guys to start. Just start acknowledging your people on their birthdays. Gail Utter handles my finances. Gail Utter is my like, oh my gosh. I look at her and go, oh, I, I, I want to be like Gail. Because she gifts not just me, but my family every single year. And I just want to give her a hug because every year I know for Christmas, I'm going to, I'm going to get a, a live wreath from her. Everyone in my family, including my grandkids get birthday cards every single year. When our dog passed away, I got a sympathy card. For my wedding anniversary, I got a card. For Valentine's Day, she always sprinkles her clients with a little love on Valentine's Day with a homemade um, gift. I feel loved. I feel appreciated. Your clients should too. They'll never forget you if you do. Um, so I hope when you guys are reviewing your business and you're trying to figure out who do I want to do business with, who did I do business with in 2022 that I thoroughly enjoyed? What about them did I enjoy? And how do I find more people like them? Chances are the best place to find them. Birds of a feather flock together. Ask your friends that you did business with that you thoroughly enjoyed. Who else do you know that's just like you because I adored you or I adore you had so much fun doing business who else do you know that's fun and cool like you because I'd like to help them too um all right then uh Renee I love your love your feedback here for those of you guys who are um, on zoom I'm leaving this open so you can you can hear this feedback um I'm gonna show you another fun way to stay in touch with your contacts in just a few minutes too that we have available and can help you with. Not from a sales pitch, pitch standpoint, but because it worked so well, I hate for you guys to be missing the opportunity by not doing this. All right, do you guys see the screen again with the, the daisy with the heart? Okay, cool. All right, so if you don't have a database so you can keep up with this information, do you know another way you can be keeping up with it for right now? Friend them on Facebook. If you friend them on Facebook and every single month you go to the event section in Facebook and you look at the birthday list, you can look at the birthday list for the entire month. Then you can download that list into an Excel spreadsheet. Then you can sort that list however you want to sort that list. I sort it by date so that I know today this is who has a birthday. Now there's some games you can play with Facebook algorithms that I'll teach on the Facebook in the Facebook class. Um, but there's there's some some value in the Facebook algorithms. You could do it also in Instagram if you're an Instagrammer. Um, you could do it in LinkedIn. Um, but getting that list off of your social media, if you don't have a good database, is a good way to make sure that you're not missing birthdays. All right, here's some ideas on how you can automate staying in touch with your people. Looking at that list, I can't hear anybody in Paragon. Um, Peggy, looking at that list, what's something you would feel comfortable with providing to your clients consistently?
Um, educational content. I'm just going to cover that for you guys real quick. There's so many great places for educational content. Um, most of the time you're, well, for me, I've got a blog. I post great articles every single day that you guys could use as educational content. You guys doing Zoom interviews, I, I'm happy to interview any of you guys and portray you as the expert, the real estate expert. And you could do this consistently, do one interview a month on Zoom, talking about whatever it is, is your field of expertise in real estate and push that out to your database, push it out to your social media feed. Um, testimonies and pushing that out to your database, showing people talking positively about you and asking them, who else do you know that I could serve? Because I love all things real estate. Is another good way to make sure that you're authentically developing relationships to connect with your people. Automation is key because you gotta have a process and a system or it won't get done. You guys are super busy and it's really easy to get distracted. Um, which is why my trigger is birthdays. I don't have to think about it. I get birthdays on every application. It goes straight into my system. So it's an easy way for us to plug and play a, a program. For me next year, next level, and you guys could offer this too. Um, um, is to do a review. Is Norman in a, is Norman in Paragon room? No, Mark, I know you can relate. Uh, you know, years ago, your insurance agent, would call you once a year for an insurance for an annual review. Y'all remember that? I don't hear from mine anymore as an annual review and maybe it's because my stuff is too complicated now and nobody wants to review it, I don't know. <laughs> but you guys reaching out to your clients for annual reviews of the real estate needs and just updating them. What if every single year as an annual review gift, you guys got to tell them what their house is now worth? It causes a conversation that might mean you have to go to their house and see what projects they've updated or what things they've done to their home since then. So you could put an annual review together with their wealth that they're building in the equity of their home. So those are two really good triggers for having customers for life that provide something of value. Renee, you're still calls you. Okay, so I'm gonna take it personal that mine hasn't. Um, so you guys just be thinking about that. What information of value can I provide to my database? What would be my trigger? And how am I gonna reach them? If you don't have a CRM going right now, Facebook is a, you, you can use CRM, uh, Facebook as a CRM, but you really need a, you need to set up your CRM. So if that is not your goal for 2022, I'm telling you it really should be. Get in there, learn your CRM, get it set up so that it automatically helps you stay in touch with your clients. Um, you all have good intentions. You're just very busy people. So automation is key. Um, so I want to share with you, again, I'm not selling, I'm not sharing to sell. However, I believe in this tool and this resource that's available to you guys. If you have another lender that you work with closely, you can ask your lender if they too use HomeBot and not just use it as a, you know, sign up and forget it, but actually use, sell, uh, use HomeBot for the value that it brings to your database. So I'm going to share this with you guys real quick, and then I'll tell you how we use it in our office to help you guys. So Sharing with your clients how to clean their gutters or the, the pay attention to diversion of water, those are all good conversations. But if you guys are having those conversations, now, if you were going to do home maintenance, the best way to do that is to video yourself at your house 
showing what home maintenance means to you and why it's important. But a lot of you guys have signed up for newsletters and every one of your customers, I mean, every one of you guys are sending the same newsletter to your databases, which means some of your clients are getting the same newsletter from multiple people. It doesn't look authentic. And it really, it's got good information, but chances are they're not gonna read and open it like they would if it was something else of value and it didn't look generic. Um, HomeBot is a service that we use that is specific to the property your clients own or specific to the property that your clients want to own. Um, all right, you guys can see where it says provide engaging content. Okay, I'm gonna cover this part and then I'm gonna show you HomeBot and why we love it so much. Uh, but when you're connecting with your people, just make sure you are who you are. Don't apologize for who you are. Just be yourself. Just be authentic with your, with your uh, communication. Being authentic comes across better in a video than it does in typed words. If you don't like video, it doesn't matter. You still need to be doing it because that's the way that people are communicating. How many of you guys now get audio text messages instead of uh, actual words typed? People are using the audio part of text messaging and they're doing more and more videos. So one of the best ways to be authentic and show who you are and create the emotion of connection is through video. Um, so if that's not on your list for next year, or if you guys need help getting over the fear, I'm happy to push you off the cliff and help you get it outside of your comfort zone. I'll nudge. I won't shove, but I will help you. Another way to stay truly engaged is through social Again, if you're not sure how you want to play the social game, I'm happy to help you with that. Uh, Coach Kyle Draper and I are going to do some classes together next year on social. So you guys be looking for that as well. I'll include it in the success series. But if you guys are not already doing social and you're not comfortable doing social and you're not comfortable doing video, I want you guys to have that content sooner rather than later. And so we're going to do a class in uh, January. So I'll be sure you guys have the information on that. Social matters. If you're in business, you just have to figure it out. You don't have to be an expert at all of them, but you probably need to be using all of them in some form or fashion. Um, another easy way, HomeBot. I wanna show you what this is all about because this is a plug and play and something of great value. Now, Stacy, your team uses HomeBot. Have you seen HomeBot? Do you know how it works? Okay, fantastic. So this is what HomeBot looks like when your customers receive information. They get an email once a month that tells them what their home values are. If you are scared to give this to your clients now and you wanna try it out for yourself, you need to email Brandy or I with your home address and your information. We'll sign you up. You receive the newsletter for a couple of months. And then if you decide you like what you see, then you can sign up for your clients to receive this too. All of the realtors that I have on HomeBot right now, that's what we did because I want you guys to feel confident and comfortable with the values that are being provided to your clients. Um, But every single month, they're gonna get something that states, something from you that states what the home values are. Corey Mills was my first customer on HomeBot and he truly was a customer. I had just done a loan for him. Did not say a single word about HomeBot. I wanted him to expand it or authentic. So, he was getting HomeBot and I let him receive it for a couple of months before I ever said anything to him. 
And then I asked him, hey, are you getting your HomeBot newsletter? And he said, yes, and I love it. I look forward to it every single month. And I open it up and I look at it and I compare it to a CMA. And the numbers are pretty darn close. And I said, great. Do you want your clients to receive that same thing? Absolutely. So we signed them up. You guys, um, Nev and Rich use it. Uh, re the Remax office is pretty much on HomeBot. I think everybody's using HomeBot and they get business from HomeBot. They get listings from their clients being on HomeBot. So they're big believers. If you guys are on this call and you aren't familiar with it, I'd love to sign you up. I want you to experience it too. But not only are they getting their uh, equity of their home, but let me just tell you the importance of people knowing how quickly they're building equity and what they can possibly do with that equity. Because at the end of the day, you guys, the, by the time someone is 62 years old, they're, the majority of their wealth is in their home. So from their first home till their last home, what could we possibly do to help them leverage that equity? I was talking to a customer yesterday. Oh, one of my favorite conversations because it was a young buyer. They already owned a couple of real uh, investment properties. Yay. Most of the time, young buyers don't already own real estate, but they understood the value in owning real estate as part of their investment or wealth building strategy. So they were taking the equity from the investment properties that they've already purchased that they rehabbed. They were gonna use that equity then to leverage the purchase of, a next, of the next one. But they wanted to go ahead and take out enough equity on this house that they could pay cash for the next house. This would be house number five for them. If you can teach your people how to leverage the equity they have in their real estate to continue to build wealth, you increase the number of sales that you do with that one client. But you have to be good at the conversation and you have to be thinking, how do I help them leverage the equity they have to continue to build wealth? It's not just about buying a home for their family. You guys, we have there the, the United States, you would be shocked how many people are financially illiterate. Y'all are in the business to help them gain knowledge through financing and through owning real estate. And it's a pretty big responsibility. HomeBot helps us with that conversation. So build wealth throughout the life cycle of home ownership. You don't know what your clients' needs are if you're not staying in touch with them and you're not having the conversation of how they could build wealth through real estate. Um, we've got a couple of tools that we use on top of that, uh, but on top of HomeBot that is actually integrated with HomeBot. And Brandy doesn't know this, but I have another integration that I'm beta testing. I was on a national call yesterday for helping people find out how to reduce their student loan payments or get their student loans forgiven. There's, I don't remember how many billions of dollars of student loans that qualify for forgiveness, but the consumer doesn't know and they don't know where to go for the information. We're about to have it for them. Brandy, I can't wait to share this with you. It is so flipping cool. And how many people have we turned down in the past because their student loan payment was too much and they didn't qualify for a house? So we're even gonna be able to tell them how much more of a house they will qualify for now because of the new student loan payment. And this service is going to do the paperwork for them within that 21 day period of time to lower their student loan payment or help them get it forgiven. Super cool. But again, you guys have got to know the information to help people build wealth through home ownership and understand what to do with that wealth once they've built it. All right, so HomeBot helps us do that 
by having all of these conversations available to them on one screen once a month. It's incredible. But the automation of the system comes through um, tons of different resources. There's a lot of algorithms built into it, um, but the information is pretty scary accurate. So um, the, I'm going to pull up my home bot just to uh, actually, Brandy, will you pull up your home bot and share screen? I'm going to, I'm going to let you, I'm going to move this over. Uh, okay. I'll stop, I'll stop sharing. Um, oh my gosh. I could just go on and on about all the different ways to use home bot, but I'm going to try to keep it just to the wealth building aspect of it. But I want you guys to know from an open rate, there has never, ever been anything I have ever provided. And those of you guys who have known me for the last 25 years knows I don't mind trying anything. I'm just looking for that success. The open rate for HomeBot, I think is like uh, 73% or something absolutely crazy for a newsletter. But it's because it's specific to their house telling them what their equity is, telling them what their value is. Then it has, how many of your people ask you, um, how much they would have to add to their payment in order to get it paid off in 25 years instead of 30? Um, it's all in there. So here is a 30 day, scroll on down. Brandy and I both put home buyers as well as home owners into the system. But go back up to the top. I want them to show, I want them to see. Out of all of, no, go a little bit further down. I want them to see the activity feed. In a 30 day period of time, she sent 171 of these newsletters out, it goes out automatically. In the last 15 hours or the last 24 hours, look how many people looked at the information on the home bot and clicked a button that triggers for us to reach out to that client and have a conversation. If you want to know what to do, I, you know, I tell you guys all the time, you have to be prospecting two hours a day. Who are you going to call? Well, number one, you're going to call everybody that has a birthday today. Number two, you're going to call everybody that has an anniversary today. Maybe you get on Facebook and you scroll around and you see what's going on. You just pulled up their birthday. I mean, pulled them up. You've got a list of all of these people that have birthdays. Go ahead and click on Facebook and see what's going on. Did someone just have a baby? Do you need to send a baby gift? Did someone just lose somebody? Is somebody sick in the household? Use that birthday or that anniversary list as a trigger to check on your people and see how they're doing. This is another trigger for you. So after you look at the birthday list, you look at the anniversary list, all right, it's, I got two hours to prospect today. Look at your home bot list. How many people have clicked around to see what's going on with the value of their home, knowing that that is one of their most important assets that is continuing to grow as an asset as the market continues to change. Here's who you're gonna call because they've already raised their hand. Click on the active, so she clicked on the active buyers. So these are people that are house hunting. She clicked on the active homeowners. She knows who she needs to call. She knows what the conversation's gonna be because it's right there. Um, click on one of those so you can show what the digest looks like. Preview digest. The information about their loan is going to automatically pull in because it's reported in the uh, MERS, which is a national uh, mortgage, something, something, something. It's a recording system. But scroll down. This particular customer received what the market's doing. If there's a big shift in the market, it will automatically send them out an alert that says that there's a big shift in the market. Here's what this market, uh, new market looks like. Shows them how much equity they have in the house. If they're curious about how that was calculated, they would just click on the, how is this calculated? If they wanted to take a look at other zip codes, they will click on that, put in a zip code and it will update or give them information about the specific zip code. We know when your clients that are also our clients are thinking about moving to another area, 
because they'll click a button, we'll get a trigger and we pick up the phone. Then you've got right here, the breakdown of the difference in principal and interest. You can also do that slider scale like Brandy is doing that tells them um, what could a refinance save them in interest. They can run that slider scale. They also have some defaults, right? So here we go, all of the information they need. When y'all had, when we all knew that markets, I mean, rates fell, a conversation that several of the agents that are partnered with us in here picked up the phone and called people and said, hey, did you notice interest rates are extremely low? Check out your home bot and see how much money you could possibly save if you were to refinance. If there wasn't any refinance opportunities to save money, 15 year, 25 year or 30 year, it would have been in red versus green. Now, if they are interested in knowing how they could pay their loan off sooner, they can do the if you just pay feature and it is a drop down where they would choose how much they need to pay in order to drop the term. Now, if someone does, oftentimes you guys are selling houses. We don't want to do a contingency because then they wouldn't get the house. But when they sell their house, they're going to put a lump sum down and we're going to recast their payment, which means just refigure the payment based on the new balance. They can do that once a year, no fee, no charge. If they do that, in order for HomeBot to be accurate, they would go already paid extra and go ahead and update the balance. So the information is still correct. Now, if you bought another home, how much could you afford? You guys, these are triggers that people might be interested in buying a new house if they click more details on this. You're going to get a notice. You're going to know what they clicked. So you know what the conversation is. It will also, if it's an area that is hot for Airbnb, it's going to provide them that information as well. Pretty cool, huh? Then it has the share home bot button. I promise your people are gonna love this information and they're gonna wanna share and show others. They can do that, share the home bot. Then their friend could just put in name, address, email address, phone number, and it will pull their report too. Now you just got a prospect. You just got a referral from one of your clients. All you got to do is stay in contact with them. Um, so it's a beautiful way to have a system that's automated, that provides people with the great education that they need consistently and gives them an opportunity to refer their friends and family who might also like that information. It's integrated with BombBomb. So if anybody of you, any of you guys are playing, uh, doing BombBomb, it's also integrated with YouTube. So you could record a, a video, which here's what I'm about to do because the market has shifted. I'm going to record a video and I'm going to send the video to all of my clients through HomeBot that just says, hey, listen, guys, the market has changed. I'm sure you've heard it in the news. This is what's going on in the market. The government is tapering off the uh propping up the mortgage industry and supporting. And because of that, number one, it's a good thing. That means that we can handle the increase in the interest rates, but they're going to inch up. So we don't drastically stop what's going on in the marketplace today. I'm gonna to do it short, sweet, to the point. If you wanna know what this means to you more specifically, give me a call, send me an email, send me a text. Short, sweet, to the point goes through every to everybody through HomeBot. They feel like I've educated them on top of the information that they're already receiving. And please, 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 who do you know that is thinking about buying a house before the end of the year so they can take advantage of the tax savings of doing so? Please give me their information because I'd love to have a conversation with them. Um, and I'll just record that, throw it through, throw it into BombBomb and it'll go out to everybody. So they'll have uh, more than just the information on the screen. So it's a powerful tool. If you guys, customers for life, what does that mean to you? Just because you did business with them the first time does not mean that these are your customers for life. There are gonna be some clients that you do business with that you are perfectly fine 
clicking that button that opts them out from any of your drip campaigns because you just may not want to do business with them again and that's perfectly fine be you be very clear about who you want to do business with and you don't have to be everything to everybody all the time that is really important whenever you're reflecting on who did i do business with in 2021 who do I want to do business with in 2022? And how am I going to do business with them? Your business is that predictable if you take the time to do the work. So for any of you guys who are not in the habit of doing that and you want some guidance on that, I'm happy to help. That's really my jam. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for the next um, 60 days. I'll have my uh, plan put together in the next couple of days so that my mind is clear and um, I can help you guys. So, does anybody have any questions? Are any of you guys overwhelmed? Or do you guys just have your wheels turning and you go, I got this? Okay. Good. I'll, I'll send you the information on it. Um, and then I also, um, for those of you guys who haven't been following, and even if you were, you probably don't know because I've been keeping it kind of a secret. Um, I did an event in Myrtle Beach where I had people that came from all over the country, 13, 13 folks came from all over the country to do a two and a half day transformational workshop about really getting clear about who you are as a person from the heart center. Who are you? What are your, what's your purpose in life? What is your core values and how do you build a life and a business around that? It was two and a half days of us being locked up in a suite, really going through a series of exercises. Um, and, I, and I wrote a book that follows along with all of that. Um, I am likely going to do something like that uh, in town, most likely at Profro. And I'll probably schedule several during the year next year. And I, uh, my plans are to break it up into a couple of different options. So if you guys are interested in more information about that, I can put you on my um, email list as this all comes together. Um, I am going to do one in San Diego. I'll do another one at Lake Tahoe, and I'll probably throw in one more national. Uh, but I also just wanted to make sure that it wasn't just on the national level, because I know that every one of you guys locally, or there's a lot of folks locally that would like to attend too, and there's no reason for y'all to travel when we can do it here. So if anybody is interested in going through that whole process of really, you know, discovering life purpose, core values, and building a business and a life around that, you need to raise your hand and say, hey, put me on the mailing list. And then as I figure out how I'm going to roll this out on a local um, level, I can let you know. So, all right, uh, if you have done this class for CE, make sure that Brandy and BJ know that. Uh, put your information in the chat. If you guys were here for just the good information, I appreciate you being here. If anybody wants any more information on HomeBot, Brandy and I are happy to provide that to you. Um, just let us know. We just wanna be a resource to help you guys do more business um, and do business with the people that you really wanna do business with and put that whole strategy together for you or with you. Not for you. All right. Cool. All right. This is the last of the series. If you have attended all of the classes so that you get the credit for the free MLS, uh, free quarter of MLS dues, then make sure that we know. We do have a roster, but I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. And I would love for you guys to say thank you to the education committee if you have enjoyed these classes because they need your feedback. So they, um, can let me know if they're going to have me back next spring. And then I will start classes again. I'm, I'm going to teach Wednesdays at 10 o'clock throughout the month for the entire year next year. So whatever content you want to make sure that I cover, you need to let me know as well. All right.